Hello, Junkaholics. Welcome back to Nice Junk. Today, we're diving into the secret that hardly anybody knows. This information can make you thousands of extra dollars with hardly any effort, no real capital investment. And you also might already have some of this valuable money right in your pocket or wallet. So what we're going to be discussing today is the secret about fancy serial numbers. And just so you know, my name's Dan. And if you're ready to code the secrets behind these unique digits, you're in for a treat. So let's dive in. First things first, what are fancy serial numbers? These are special series of numerical digits on banknotes that are on, in the serial numbers that deviate from the standard sequences. They have a unique and rare and also aesthetically pleasing characteristics. While seemingly small, these numbers hold significant value for collectors and enthusiasts alike. And they may even, it's not even just for collectors of money, but historians are involved in this. Um, people with different hobbies will collect these banknotes just because they're relevant to their hobby. Let's explore some intriguing examples. And just remember, um, U.S. banknotes have eight digits and Canadian banknotes have seven digits. So not all of these uh, examples that I will discuss may work in your country, but I will try and point out how you can make them work. It just won't be exactly the same. So a low serial number would start off with a lot of zeros. So like on American currency, there's eight digits. So you would have seven zeros. And in Canada, you would have six zeros and then a number. Um, I would consider anything that's 5,000 or or less a low serial number. So it would be from here. So if you had four zeros, five zero zero zero, I would consider that a low serial number and it's worth more money. Um, this website says one through nine, and of course, those are worth a lot of money. Uh, according to this website, something like that is worth between seven hundred and four thousand um, dollars to collectors. You know, from the one to nine, but do not think that a a zero 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 five thousand isn't worth some extra money it sure is you're just not going to get the same values as a one through nine now the same thing with a high serial number would be the same idea but these numbers would be nine and one through nine um that would constitute a um a very desirable high serial number bill. But again, just like the low, if you had 5,000, so 9999,5000, it's still a valuable bill. So now we have ladders. A ladder serial number is exactly what it sounds like. It's like a stair step. They go in a numerical order from low to high or high to low. 
So basically, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or the other direction would be eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It's a ladder. These bills, according to this website, have a value of six hundred to twenty one hundred dollars. Um, that is pretty intriguing. And it's the same with uh, Canada. They still have the same value. We have collectors in Canada. So I've brought us to binary serial numbers. A binary number featuring only two different digits can really create a visually striking pattern on currency and making it stand out. Binary bills consisting of zeros and ones are even more desirable and will command more money because they appeal to another collector. And that would be people that work or hobby in computers. So zeros and ones, if they're all zeros and ones, these, these people will be attracted as well as um, coin collectors and, you know, money collectors. So here they say value 10 to 35 to, to the face. Um, I've actually had some binary bills go uh, 200% more than, than uh, face value. So again, make sure you check with your your money guys, you know, like the coin money collector shops, they will have it for you. And not only that, another reason why it's so important to check with a coin shop, because different signatures, um, like who was prime minister, who was um, the uh, finance minister during a certain year, will also bring in more money. So you got to get these things checked out by a professional. I'm showing you what to bring to the professionals to get evaluated. So a trinary bill would also be somewhat similar to a binary bill, but you would have three digits and only three digits reoccurring in the series of numbers. Um, they're interesting. They're not as collectible because they're not as rare. So, but hey, if you can get an extra 10, 20 bucks on a bill, why not? Now we're at the next classification, which is repeater serial numbers. So they're... Repeater serial numbers, where a sequence repeats, offers a symmetrical and aesthetically pleasing touch to the serial number. This works best with currencies having an even amount of numbers. But it does not exclude odd number ones either, just depending on how the pattern works itself out. According to the, this website, um, it adds 15 to $20 to the, added to the face value. I don't totally agree with that. I think depending on the, um, serial number, it can add a lot more than 15 to $20. Now, super repeaters, a super repeater takes it to the next level. Super repeater numbers provide an even more distinctive pattern, making them highly sought after. And this works, again, better with currencies with an even amount of digits. So it's basically a binary that also just repeats itself. 
So two digits repeating itself constantly. So now we have double quad. Um, these guys don't have an example of it, but it's basically the first four digits are the same and the last four digits are the same. This does not work on odd number currency. Radar serial numbers are my favorite. For some reason, I just get tickled pink when I see them. They're not the most valuable, but they're the ones I love. Um, a radar number reads the same backwards as forwards, creating a mirror effect. So if you look, 1006-6001. If you read it the opposite direction, it reads the same. Now, to me, that's just one of the coolest things. Radar bills, again, I don't agree with this. I've sold some uh, radar bills to 300 times the face value. Now, you can also have in a radar bill a um, what's called a repeater radar bill, which is like crazy rare. And uh, so you get, I'll give you an example. Say if this was 6116. 6116 reads the same forwards to backwards and it repeats itself stupid rare and you you're definitely s sitting on a nice chunk of change so now we have seven in a row serial numbers um in canada what would be valuable are six in a row serial numbers. So just keep in mind for your, your uh, currency. So basically you have any digit at either end. Um, and then you have seven consecutive numbers or six consecutive numbers in, in Canada. And these are really sought after as well. Again, very visually appealing. I love them. Now, you also have another classification. There's not an example on this website, but it's a solid number. So that means all these numbers would be the same. So it would be 999999999. Nine, it could be all ones, could be all twos, could be all zeros, could be all fives. Well, I guess it wouldn't be all zeros because that's an impossibility. Because they always start off with serial number one. So then there's also, while we're looking at these, seven of a kind numbers. And in Canada would be six of a kind. So basically, it would be all the same number except for one. And that number could be anywhere in that serial number, making them a little less rare, but still very rare. So you could have all nines, except for maybe this digit here is a two, or this digit here is a six. Doesn't really matter as long as you have all of them but one. Then there's also something called birth date or anniversary serial numbers. So, incorporating a historical significance, a date or birthday number such as George Washington's birthday or the bombing of Pearl Harbor can really bring in some decent money. Um, say the, the day that JFK got shot. Like, really high historical um, meaning and also, you're appealing not only to coin collectors and money collectors, but you're also appealing to history buffs. So, you know, like, just for an example, you know, 09-11-2001. It doesn't work so well in Canada, 
spot. Um, I'm sure there's an angle. I haven't really found it yet. But if uh, you have an idea how that might work in Canada with being an odd number, let me know in the comments below. And I really would like to hear any any stories that you might want to share that you've had with fancy serial numbers. If you already knew about this in the past or in the future, come back to this video. Share with me what you found because I just find this so intriguing and I love well, it a lot. you've seen all the different examples, when it comes to value, that depends, of course, on condition as well as rarity. Like we discussed looking at the examples. Um, I, I, like I said early in the video, a binary will always be worth more than a trinary unless it's got other features of other fancy serial numbers. Then you may have a home run. All I can say is in my experience, since finding out that there is a collector market for serial numbers, I have earned one and a half to 200 times face value, and I have made several thousands of dollars just checking my serial numbers. I want to remind you, before you go and try and sell your bills, bring them to a coin money collector store they will take a look at your serial numbers and tell you what you've got um, sometimes like i say who was finance minister or who was the president or prime minister at the time of this of this um money being printed may also hold more significant value on top of having a serial number which can explode the value of that bill. And not only that, the dealer, the coin collector, the, co the coin uh, money dealer, he may just give you an offer right there and then. And that's how I sell most of mine is to the guy that's going to sell it to the collectors. I don't need to make all the money. It's, I'd rather give that job to the person that knows. He'll present them properly. He already has the contacts. I'm all about get in, get out, make my money, move on, go look for more. You know, like scrapping. Some things just aren't worth scrapping. Uh, sometimes you're just better off selling at a lower number, going looking for more stuff. It's uh, not rocket science here. It's very easy principle to to grasp. Um, I even found that in my days as an antique dealer. Yeah, I could hold out on a sign for an extra two hundred bucks, but it might take me an extra three years to sell it. But hey, if I'm already making a couple hundred bucks on an item, why hold on to it? Flip it and go look for your next investment. Collecting these fancy serial numbers has been a, become a captivating hobby for a lot of people. The rarity and uniqueness of each pattern contribute significantly to the value in the collector market. Um, and I guess the only other thing I got to say is how to spot fancy serial numbers. It does take some training, but that training is with you. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. You just seem to pick this stuff out. So what I do is I look for repeating patterns, um, lower or higher numbers. If I see a whole bunch of nines or a whole bunch of zeros, 
I'm going to take a look at that bill close, closer. If I see, like, you know, it seems like, oh, there's not very many digits on this bill. I'm going to look at that one closer because the chances of getting a repeater or a radar note or it'll just stand out. And there you have it. That's the world of fancy serial numbers. Um, who would have thought that numbers on your banknotes could be so intriguing? Next time you're handling cash, take a moment to inspect those bills. You might just stumble upon a hidden gem that is worth thousands of dollars. I've not found one yet, but that doesn't mean you won't find one. You may already have one. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share, and uh, make sure you share your experiences on fancy serial numbers. See if you've already found serial numbers, fancy serial numbers, share it with me. In the future, um, if you find fancy serial numbers, come back to this video, leave a comment. I want to hear about it. I'm just so intrigued by um, this. It's addicting. So for people that have stayed to the very end of this video, because I know it's getting long, um, here's some added bonus for you. Um, what I do is I will purchase smaller items with larger banknotes so that way I get more money to inspect. I'm constantly doing that. Um, I'll also go to the bank. I'll ask to withdraw a thousand bucks. I'll inspect those banknotes. Um, and then I will turn around the next day, go to the bank, deposit that money, go to another teller and draw another thousand bucks. Take a look. You never know. And at a bank, the chances of getting a nicer conditioned serial number is greater. They deal with a lot of new bills that are coming in from the treasury. For us in Canada, we call it the mint. Um, and this is where you're going to find good stuff. So thanks for joining me on nice junk. And hopefully you can some, find some nice junk in your wallet. So we'll catch you next time and good luck hunting.